Hello and welcome to the Kinetic Networks YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over how you can install and set up one of our Modpacks uh, servers. So it doesn't matter what uh, Modpack you're using, but today I'm going to be doing uh, demonstrating it with Colony. Um, so there are three places you can get the server files from. You can either download them off our Technic pages with this big blue button here, uh, server download right down the side, which you should also see. There you go, here, server download. Or you can get them from Curse. Um, so hang on, that's Colony. And then if you go to Files, and then you should see there's a server pack here. And you can just press the download button right there. Or you can go to sleepingt.xyz forward slash server files. You can see it's right there. All the same thing. So all you do is click on that or whatever and you'll download the zip file, which I've put into a desktop file on uh, a folder on my desktop even, uh, which I suggest you also do unless you fancy running a server from your downloads folder. So the first thing you need to make sure is to check the version numbers match. So this is 3.2.0 and the latest version for Colony. Uh, if we just go over to here, that's mythic. Oh, you can see it's 3.2.0. If there's a dot one after the zero or a C, B, D, whatever at the end, you'll probably be fine. The server files will probably work. Uh, but this is if this is like a four or that's a three, then the, they won't they won't work. Uh, and you'll need to go about updating the server files yourself, which I'll brush on at the end of uh, this. So uh, once you've downloaded the zip, all you do is extract it. You can extract it with extract tool using a Windows extract thing, or you can extract using 7-zip or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. There we go, so we've got the server files in here. Now, this is important. Please, before asking support, read this. I've lovingly made a document here for you and no one reads it, <laughs> so it causes some problems. Um, anyway, so this goes over how to add more RAM, which we'll do in this video anyway, how to start the server, fixing lag and adding plugins, which again, we'll cover in this video. Um, but this will go over everything you should need to know and anything you're stuck with to do with the server. So if you go into your server files, uh, you can see this is all what you've got here. Simply to start the server is press on this. This will open up this folder here and the server will start. Uh, it really is that easy. Um, everything else is pretty much set up for you. Um, it might crash in a minute and that's because we have to accept the Minecraft ULA. Um, so to run through all of this, yeah, depending on the speed of your machine will depend on how quick the server boots. Um, if you've got a slower powered machine then uh, the slower your server will actually start now one thing i don't recommend doing actually is there we go uh, we've crashed so all we do is go to the minecraft ula edit with notepad plus plus or just edit it any way you want doesn't matter and just set this to true and just save it and then we can start the server again so you can see it's created a, a bunch more folders here now let's press the start there you go so one thing i don't necessarily recommend doing uh, if you've got a lower spec machine is running this on the same machine you're running your mod packs on if you've got something like a 16 gigabyte machine like mine you'll probably be fine um but if you've got say an 8 gig machine uh, i mean the packs are going to take around three to four gigs to run so is the server uh, and you see your problem right there there are a number of tricks though uh, that you should better use to get your pack uh, your server not to lag so much which again i'll touch over um, in, an, in another part of this video. Uh, so we'll just wait for this to turn on. You'll need to allow Java for your firewall. That's fine, that's just Java, it's nothing from us. Uh, we're not putting a virus on there, don't worry. And it should start the world, here we go. Woof, there we go. It's just started the server there, it's just doing some calculators. Yeah, just keep doing that, there we go. Right, so if you want to run commands for it, that's relatively simple. You can run commands just by typing in um, into this box here. So just by typing, you can run a command into your server. Um, so let's just time set day, for example. Time set. Don't put a slash in front of it. Otherwise, if you look. Oh, slash works anyway. It turns out I'm a fat liar. So it doesn't matter. You can have a slash or not. Um, as it turns out, I'm just a liar. You can press the up arrow to bring in any commands you've sent out in the past. And watch out because sometimes it bugs out into the top there like that. But that's fine. And um, to stop your server, all you do is do stop. And that will just turn your server off and save the chunks. And then press enter. There we go. Right. So... Uh, by default, the pack comes allocated with three gigabytes of RAM, which should be plenty enough 
to um, to to run the thing. So what you want to do if you want to change it is edit this with Notepad++. Now I'll put a just link in the description where you can download Notepad++ from, um, but it should be pretty simple. Just Notepad++. Boom, and you can download it right from there. There you go, symbols. Um, so if you right click on this and press edit with Notepad++, you can see you've got the startup argument here. Now this is where you change the RAM amount. And if you go to here, you can see I've listed a RAM key here for you so you don't have to Google it, all the way up to 10 gigabytes. All you need to do is in this, in here, is swap out this and this with, oh, not all that, and this with the RAM amounts you want, and then and then just save it and boot it out into, um, let's get rid of that, uh, as, and boot it again, and that'll be the RAM allocated to your pack. Now, if you are doing it on a lower spec PC, the probably what you wanna do is actually pre-gen the world. Now, you can do this by downloading a mod, a pre-gen mod, um, which you just Google, literally just Google pre-gen mod and one will come up, or you can use it with a plugin like we do on the servers. Uh, which again I'll go for that in just a second so that's all there is to it literally to if you want to start your server add more RAM to it that's it or you can just connect it to your server now if you just start it just by going to here this is the colony pack you can just press public server or multiplayer they do the same thing now and you can just type in local host and you'll be able to connect to it um, when it's booted obviously if you want to have people outside of your machine connect to it, then you'll need to give them their IP address. If they still can't connect to it, you'll probably need to port forward. Now, we're not going to be making a tutorial here on how to port forward things because there are so many different things out there, uh, different routers and hubs and everything can be different. So just Google how to port forward um, Minecraft on your um, router um, and it'll probably come up with a tutorial on YouTube on how to do it. Um, it, it really is that simple. Well, you just go through and add the ports to it and that'll be it. Um, you can do stuff with Hamachi uh, and stuff like that, but I, I honestly do recommend you just port forward it yourself uh, and do it the proper way. That way you won't have any issues or stuff like that. So you go, it's booted like that. This is the colony server. You can just join and log in. It's all very exciting. Um, so we'll just join. You should be able to see me joining in the, in the, in the console here. There you go. I'm in. Look at that. It's as simple as that. Now, if you want to run plugins on your server, things get a little bit um, more complicated. Well, not that much more complicated. You literally just to swap out the jar file and the libraries and you'll be fine. So if you want to run plugins on here, all you do is stop the server. And there we go, press continue. Now you need to delete um, this and this here, like so, and you need to delete this folder here. And then you need to go to Thermos, which I'll put a link in the description down below. And we'll download it from here. And then you need to download this version of Thermos right here. Don't download these other two versions. Make sure it's this one and just download. Now, what Thermos does is it allows you to run Bucket plugins. Um, so any plugin from Bucket or Spigot won't run for uh, SpongeForge plugins. They're for SpongeForge. Um, it will allow you to run those. Um, on your Forge server, which you can't do normally. So what you need to do is open up the zip file and make sure you drag and drop these into your server. Now it might take a little while depending on your hard drive speed and even slower if you do it the way I did it, you'd probably be better off extracting it and then moving it over. Windows Extract All is um, quite slow <laughs> uh, compared to something like 7-Zip or WinRAR. Uh, so we'll just, we'll just wait for it to do that. Anyway, so what this is doing is just extracting the jar out and the libraries so that's where you have to delete the forge libraries and stuff like that um it's gone back down to zero bytes i do not i recommend you extract it first and put it over because uh i don't know if it's just me who has a problem with their extract tool but honestly it sucks let's try again <laughs> right let's go to here and then we'll just extract here there you go it's like night and day <laughs> Right, uh, let's get a, just drag and drop that into there. Replace the file destination because I've already moved it over. Ah, there we go. Go on. Move over. There we go. Right. So now what you need to do, if you just right click on this and press rename, copy all of that, and then go to your start.bat we were in earlier. And then what you need to do is replace from this point to this point with the new jar name, and then press save, close it out, 
and then press the start.bat. Now this will boot your server again, only this time it will be running Thermos and it won't be running um, the Forge that it was before. Let's give it a little while to boot up. There you go, you can see it's creating a bunch more files in here now. And you should eventually see a plugins folder. I just pressed enter there by the way if you wonder what I did it got a bit stuck at the top just press enter it will skip through down it all right let's wait for it to carry on making all the files there's a, a legal exception error there but that's fine there you go we're creating a dimension and that's it so the server's online now just like it was before and you've got a plugins folder drag and drop any plugins for 1.7.10 into that box boom you've got plugins um so why i recommend if you want to pre-gen it is download a world border plugin whoops so uh, this is the one we use here on the server now the reason we use this is because it's the best pre-gen plugin we found. So if you download this version right here, just download it and then do slash WB fill and you can start the world the pre-gen. So what the pre-gen does is it means it will generate chunks for you. Um, so running around in the server means that all the chunks are being generated and that can cause quite a lot of lag. If you pre-generate those chunks before you start playing on the server, don't do it while you're on the server, do it before. It means all that lag's gone and it can help on lower end systems. Uh, one thing you can also do if you go into the server.properties file right down here is change the view distance down. Uh, we probably don't want to go any lower than four and that means less stuff is going to be um, loaded and then it should help the lag on your server. So that really is as simple as it is to get going and start playing with one of our servers. We've made it as simple as possible just to download it. If you want to use a server host or something like that, we don't currently recommend any or not affiliated by any, so I'm not going to because uh, we don't use server hosts or anything. We host the, the systems off from OVH, uh, the ones we use for the servers. Um, all you need to do is make sure you put the forge jar on there and the mods in it, just like I showed you, so you'll be starting it from whatever panel they have. I recommend you contact their support team if you do get stuck, and not us, um, because they know more what to do. Anyway, that's how you install one of our servers and get it set up. I hope you have a, have a good time with the servers. If you've got any more, you need any more help or support, please head to our Discord server right here. Oh, you can also download them here, and then go to private server support, and we'll be happy to help you out. Anyway, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you later.